Hi, this is Julian and welcome for a new tutorial on Affinity Photo. This is a very simple tutorial on how to create HDR. Uh, it's very easy in Affinity Photo. However, uh, I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks to get the best result possible in the least amount of time. So let's go to File and then New HDR Merge. So you need to merge a bracketing first. Bracketing means you're going to expose three times a single photograph. So actually you get three photographs. You can do more than three, obviously, but by default with a Canon camera, it's going to be three. So this is file new HDR merge. I'm going to click add, and then I'm going to use uh, different source files, the one I use for HDR. The three files, you can download them uh, on my website. You've got the, uh, the link in the description down below. And if you subscribe to the license, it's a Creative Commons license, so no commercial use, you can download the three source files. So now I have uh, my three files, so it's a bracketing, so I have an underexpose, an overexpose, and a medium uh, file. I'm going to leave the option by default, automatically align images needs to be uh, checked, and I'm going to use some noise reduction, and also check automatically remove ghost. It means if a subject moved uh, while I was taking the three photographs, it's going to remove it automatically, or remove them if you've got several subjects that are moving. Here, if we look at the files, we're going to see them once it's done. We've got some tourists that are, uh, that are walking uh, in the field here, so obviously I want to get rid of some ghosts if I have them. Um, they're not moving very quickly, uh, however, if you've got, like, I don't know, a bird or an animal, it is very likely that it's going to be blurry because it moved uh, across the three photos while you were taking them. So that's why there is an algorithm that's going to remove what we call ghost. This is something we're going to do anyway in post because we're going to remove the tourist from the photo and also remove the uh, the, the post, the signs here, uh, which are um, next to the road because it's not really pretty. Uh, I want to get some information back uh, on the sky because it's very... Um, uh, it, it could be more contrasting, could be uh, a lot more dramatic for this photo. So now we've got result. Uh, it's going to be compressed with tone mapping. I'm going to adjust that in a few seconds. And then we're going to create a black and white version because there's a lot we can do. But my goal here is to give you, uh, if you want to start with Affinity Photo, you want to learn how to do HDR, I want to give you really uh, quick uh, tips and tricks to get started very, uh, very easily so you don't mess up with uh, tons of different options. So depending on the on the power of your machine, uh, it's going to take a longer time. Uh, it also depends on the uh, on the amount of photos you used to assemble your HDR. Here I have three photos that have been taken with a Canon 6D. So it's it's fairly big. It's not huge, but it's a fairly big amount of data to push in. Uh, I can see here I have uh, RGBA 32 bits uh, file. Why? Um, usually we have 16 bits for a digital negative for a raw file. But if you use like a lot of different files to assemble in an HDR, you can end up with a lot more than actually 65,000 uh, values. So that's why Affinity is going to use um, a 32 bits file. So now I'm going to go to turn map and I'm going to put the, um, the panel here so you can see it better. And I can use some preset uh, if I have them. Here I have um, you have used the, the French version uh, previously, so you should have all your presets. I don't know why I don't have them because I know for sure they are working. Uh, for some reason, when I change the language of Affinity Photo, I lose all my presets in the English version, which is very funny. But anyway, uh, what I want to show you how to, is how to uh, develop your own HDR. So we're not going to use preset anyway. So let's say I want uh, I want more details. I want a, uh, something a bit more dramatic. So what I can do. Uh, is use local contrast so I get more details and as you can see it's already a lot better. Also what we can do is go to shadow and highlights and as you can see on the sky it's a bit uh, overexposed, it's a, a very strong light up there so I'm going to highlight and reduce the highlights. So as a result I've lost a bit of, uh, of contrast but we're going to add some later on once we are in Affinity Photo in the, uh, in the, in the Persona. Here we are in the uh, Turn Mapping Persona. Once we've done, we click Apply and we switch, we switch back to the uh, regular Affinity Photo. So this is uh, what I wanted. I've got plenty of details to work with. So I'm going to click Apply now and switch to Affinity. So again, we're going to render the file, 
send it back to Affinity, and now we can use adjustment layers, whatever we want. So first of all, I want to get rid of this tourist. Uh, don't forget the reflection on the lake and some of the uh, on the signpost uh, on the road. So let's zoom in, and we're going to use the lasso tool with the L shortcut, and use a feather of 30 pixel. So we have a nice and clean selection. Not too precise, not too rough, but it's just something that's going to uh, go across the texture surrounding the person. So we go to Edit and then In Paint. It's the same um, result we, you would uh, get with the uh, Content to Wear in Affinity uh, in Photoshop. Um, sorry, Affinity is called In Paint, in Photoshop it's called Content Aware. So we do a selection and we can use a shortcut which is Alt Backspace. And look at it, it's just magic. It's going to replace the texture with the surrounding, surrounding texture. So maybe a bit better than this, yes. So don't forget the reflection, Alt Backspace, wait a few seconds, boom. That's very impressive. Let's do it again. And we're gonna do it once more for the road. All right, so let's move up there. Do a nice and run selection with the feather. Again, in paint. And we've got plenty of texture around it. And now, if you zoom back it, uh, back out, okay, there is no traces of what we removed, so it's a very good result in a few seconds. Now we can work, we can work with the light and the colors. So I want, yeah, I want something better in the sky. It's it's a bit dull, it's a bit um, it's a bit boring. So what I'm gonna use is adjustment. Um, brightness and contrast, very easy, very simple, uh, a bit basic, some uh, might say, but it does the job and it's very easy to use for people that start with Affinity. So we're going to push the contrast and in the end, if you like this look, you can keep it like this, but I, I feel there is, um, there is too much on the, on the foreground. It's okay on the background and the sky, but it's too much on the foreground. So let's just use the paintbrush, uh, use the black and paint here. So we remove the adjustment on the foreground. I've got enough detail on the foreground. There's no need to add some more. It's okay on the mountain. Uh, it's definitely okay on the sky, but it's too much on the foreground. So now I have added a lot more details on the sky and the mountain, which is great. Now, what I could do is uh, use some vibrance to get a bit more saturation. This is something I could have done before in the tone uh, persona, but if you forgot, that's it's not too bad. You can just add a vibrance adjustment, and now we've got a proper uh, vibrance, very saturated colors, but not too much, so that's cool. And now what I could do is create a different version, uh, like a black and white version. And if I use the adjustment black and white, what it's going to do, it's going to convert all the colors in grayscale. So all the colors can be now uh, gray, and they can be dark gray or light gray. So if I click on the red, I can make the red darker with the yellows darker. I can make the blues darker, so now I've got proper contrast in the end. But there is no way to work really on the sky. As you can see, cyan is going to work on the sky, but to get a proper sky, I need to completely uh, crush the mountain. So it's not really something... I'm gonna do. Well, actually, there is a way. Uh, we're just gonna use a second brightness contrast adjustment. It's very easy. So you know how to do it. We've just done it before. Second brightness and contrast. Again, I'm gonna push the contrast, maybe uh, reduce the brightness a little bit. And I'm going to paint on the mask with the black because, again, I completely crushed the foreground. I only work, I only want to work on the sky for this black and white. So let's just remove my brightness contrast by painting in black on the foreground. And now I will get a proper sky in black and white without affecting the foreground. So now I can put these two layers, uh, adjustment layers in one group and say this group is going to be for black and white version. So I've developed an HDR in color and also in black and white in the same file, which is very easy um, and very convenient if I want to export that in two different versions. I can show, uh, if I have the client, I have a client meeting, I can show 
the different version with just one file. So now you know, uh, as you can see, it's very easy to do HDR with Affinity. Um, uh, there is a tone mapping persona which is entirely dedicated to HDR. Obviously, you need at least two files uh, to create, to assemble an HDR. So if you do bracketing with a Canon camera, it's going to be three by default. But if you want to do it manually, you can assemble like nine files and go crazy if you want to. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Uh, you can download the source files on my website, julianpons.com. You've got the link in the description down below. So you can use... Uh, the, the files for education purpose, uh, obviously. Then you can switch to my YouTube channel where you can find more tutorials. I publish one tutorial a week at least uh, in French and in English. And you can follow me as well on my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash UK. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>